Building a routine has changed my life. Year after year after year, I would write out all of these goals for myself all of these goals that I wanted to achieve in the new year. I would consistently write out, I would wanna lose weight, become really fit, gain muscle, start my influencing career, start a small business, be more social, all of these things were on my goals list every single year. And I would go into the year with no plan, no strategy on how to implement these goals at all just going into the year with full-blown chaos okay i would be so surprised year after year after year when i didn't achieve any of the goals that i set for myself baffled like how i would start the year off working out like so many of us i would be in the gym almost monday through friday for the first couple of weeks of the year and then i would burn out crash and not go back to the gym for months and not build any type of schedule for myself it felt like insanity, right? Doing something over and over again and expecting results and expecting different results. Doing the same thing over and over again and expecting different results. We all know how to write goals, right? We all know the things that we want in our lives. One thing that no one really talks about is how hard it is to build a routine and a schedule that's going to help us achieve those goals. I would watch videos like this all the time from a plethora of very, very smart, insightful creators. And I would watch those videos and straight up be like, there is no way that that creator is doing X, Y, and Z. There is no way that they wake up early, they do this, they do that, they have this routine. Not knowing that I was projecting my own insecurities and my shortcomings onto this creator. I was projecting. And it's not an easy realization to come to. And once I realized that I was just a big hater because I wasn't where I wanted to be because I didn't know how to, that's when everything changed for me. My name is Shannon Domihina. Hi, if you're new here, I make fitness content, lifestyle content, and everything in between, and I hope you subscribe. In this video, we're gonna be talking about how to build a routine. I'm gonna show you how I've structured my day-to-day -day routine to reduce the amount of stress, anxiety, scrolling, comparison, how I've structured my days to be the most successful for me and my current routine. We're gonna talk a little bit about sacrifice. We're gonna talk about imposter syndrome, and we're just gonna get all the way into the nitty gritty in this video. So let's tap into it. Routines are kind of scary because people look at them and think that it's something that you have to do every single day, Monday through Sunday, like seven days a week. And that is just not the case. Building a routine for yourself can be something that you do three to four times a week to keep you on track for the goals that you've set for yourself. Whether it's fitness goals, whether it's to start a small business, or whether it's just to like spend more time doing the things that you like to do in your life, routines are going to help you feel more fulfilled in your everyday life. That is why I like implementing a routine. Please note that it is not an everyday thing and it does not have to be an everyday everyday thing. Once you create a routine that is it for you, it's gonna feel good. You're gonna know when the routine is the routine. I wanna preface this by saying that we're not trying to be perfect over here. I'm not trying to be perfect. I know I am not perfect. I'm not a millionaire yet, okay? <laughs> I'm not a millionaire. My bank account has seen better days, okay? I could eat better, I could work out more, and I am working on all of these things that I'm talking about in this video, day after day after day, to reach the goals that I've implemented for myself. It's all about progress. We're not worried about perfection. And the minute I realized that it's all about progress over perfection, that's when everything changed for myself. It's about how we feel about ourselves at the end of the day, and it's not about how everyone views us. It's not about the noise, it's not about the audience, it's about us. So, grab a pen and paper, okay? Maybe grab your water bottle or a glass of wine. Girl, I love a good glass of wine too. And let's start building a routine together. So whether you have a piece of paper, pen and paper, you can also use Google Calendar, you can also use a planning tool. I need you to write out your daily non-negotiables first. And I need this to be a schedule, okay? Whatever time this starts, 
to the wee hours of the night. I need a time blocked schedule. And these non-negotiables have to include you getting ready for work, your commute to work, how long are you at work, and then when do you get home? Those are your non-negotiables. And that also does include kids. If you have to go pick up your kids after work or whatever, and you bring them home, and then you have to get them settled, whatever that routine is, that's a non-negotiable too. So what is your non-negotiable routine? I'll tell you guys mine real quick. I wake up to get ready for work at 6 a.m. And this is my non-negotiable routine without all the extras, without workouts, without anything. I wake up and get ready for work at 6 a.m. I need to be out of the house between 6.45 and 6 55. I get to work at 7.30. I work from 7.30 to 1.30. I work part-time. So I leave work at 1.30, sometimes 1.45, some days it just depends on the day. And I get home between 2 and 2.15. It just depends on traffic and all that good stuff. So when I look at my schedule, I have a lot of time in the afternoon to do a lot of stuff, right? From like 2.15 up until like 10.30 at night. That's eight hours that I have, which is crazy to say. Oh wow, because some days, some days I spend those eight hours on the couch, not even gonna lie. This is why this is important. So I have eight hours outside of that, I have about an hour before work. Okay, so now that you've written out your non-negotiables, I need you to write out your priorities. What are your priorities? Are your priorities working out? For me, it's working out, content creation, and spending time with my loved ones. Those are my three top priorities in my everyday life. Then I need you to also write out your behavior. <laughs> what are the things that you wish you didn't do when you got home from work? And we all know what it is. Do you have a habit of scrolling for hours? I mean, for me personally, I have ADHD, self-diagnosed ADHD. I get off task so easily. And then once the noise starts in my head, it's so hard for me to start another task. Say I get home and Mila has destroyed the kitchen. She's gone through the trash, which she's done multiple times. She's gone through the trash, so now I have to clean up all the trash and then wipe down the floors and vacuum and then mop. And that ruins my whole day, even though it only took about an hour and a half to do. It ruins my whole day. Now I can't do content creation. I can't even edit and I'm done for the day. I just, like, I, I have so much noise in my head that I'm just kind of like, I can't deal with anything else after dealing with Mila's meltdown. I can't deal with anything else. You need to write down your behaviors because it does play a huge part in how your day-to-day Goes. Once you start mapping out your routine, it's going to take a lot of repetition. It's going to take a lot of trying new things, switching things around to see what works best for you. It's going to take a lot of trial and error. I'm just going to say this right now. So this summer when I started my part-time job and I decided I want to do my part-time job and part-time influencing, it took me a long time to figure out what routine was going to work for me. I'm gonna show you guys the two routines that I followed and which ones worked for me. Routine number one. So I woke up at 6 a.m., got ready for work, did my whole work thing. After work, I went straight to the gym, worked out, and then I came home, did any influencing that I have to do, and that would happen around four, three or four, and then I would spend the evening around six or seven hanging out with Michael. This side, I would wake up at 4.45 a.m., go to the gym at 5 a.m., come home, get ready, go to work, get home at two, take an hour to myself, start working on YouTube around three, and then when Michael came home around like six, seven, eight, hang out with him. All right, when you look at these two schedules, this one looks daunting to people. Why? Because I'm waking up at 4.45 a.m. And that is just not something that a lot of people wanna do. And this schedule looks a lot more doable. It just looks more normal, right? This schedule did not work for me. It did not work for me. After going to work and going straight into the gym, I had all of this like crazy energy from being pumped up in the gym. It was so hard for me to take that from a 10 to a two to then go into like editing. And that was like really hard for me. Like I couldn't bring my energy down to sit down and edit. So then I would like scramble and I really wouldn't start editing until like seven. It felt like I was just trying to bunch in too many things. This routine gave me a lot of anxiety. It made me so anxious to the point where I just would not do anything. I would come home and just not do anything because it was just 
too overwhelming. I would start the day at work without pouring into myself. Oh, let there be a bad customer that comes in. That just ruins my whole day. For me personally, whenever I poured into myself first, a bad customer is not gonna phase me. Two bad customers won't phase me. It's crazy. My early morning routine yielded the best results. It decreased my anxiety. I stopped scrolling as much. I stopped comparing myself as much. And I just started focusing in on myself. I felt 10 times better as a person waking up at 4.45 a.m. more than I did the other routine. That's my why for waking up that early. Once you're very honest about how much time you have in your day, truly how much time you have in your day to really execute the things that you want to execute, things will start rolling for you. Don't forget those commutes because those take time out of your day. It takes energy too. Don't forget to include downtime. You're going to want to decompress after work. No matter how good of a day I have, I always have to decompress after work. Include your cleaning schedule, include time with friends, include time with family, include everything that you want and you need to do. That's what I need you to do. I need you to not only draft out multiple schedules, but I need you to execute them. I need you to try them all out for multiple days and journal how you're feeling. Journal how you feel as you're going through these days. Thing is, you won't even have to journal it. You're just gonna feel it. You're gonna feel that one routine fills you up way more than the other. I had a comment on one of my recent videos, which thank you guys for always commenting. You guys really do make my day when I see comments. I try to respond to as many as I can. Um, I'm going to put this comment on the screen, but I'm gonna blur out her name because I don't wanna put her on blast in a video like this. But she said, this video is exactly what I needed. I have to admit that I didn't start off this year in the best way and felt a bit down about it. However, I'm still determined to make it a year full of change and growth and want to thank you for your encouraging words, which that made me so happy and I related to that so much because last year in 2022, I did not start the year off strong. I started the year off with COVID. Me and Michael were both sick on Christmas and on New Year's. The year started and it felt like it was just going without me. I felt frazzled the whole first three months of the year, I was planning a wedding, I was getting married, I was <laughs> planning a bachelorette, and like, it was chaos the whole beginning of the year. A huge part of it was starting off the year sick and not feeling my best. No, you can't control those things. I wanna tell you, there's gonna be things in life that we can't control. As long as you're making the effort to like move forward and to make changes, that's all that matters. I didn't implement a routine in my life. I didn't start implementing these routines, guys, until August and September of this year. That's dang near the end of the year. <laughs> and I dealt with so much like burnout because I didn't have a routine and then I realized something has to give. Like something has to give, I have to change things up. I'm on your side, girl, I'm here for you. And we're all rooting for you. We're rooting for each other in 2023. So let's talk about some things that really need to be said. Depending on your goals, there's going to have to be some type of sacrifice. For me personally, I have sacrificed so much of my social life, just downtime, just going shopping and relaxing and watching Netflix. Like I've sacrificed so much. And so many people are probably like, girl, what type of sacrifice is that? Netflix. But really though, really, like I don't have kids yet. And I don't really have any huge responsibilities in my life. So those are sacrifices to me, social time and stuff like that. I think so many people are afraid to go after what they want to go after because they feel like if they fail, what was all the sacrifice for? What if I fail? All of this is for nothing. I missed out on milestones. I missed out on just hanging out with my friends and going out and being social. I missed out on just big things in life to focus on this. What if I fail? What if you don't? Because in the end, it'll all be so worth it. So do realize that goals are going to come with some type of sacrifice. It just depends on what you're willing to sacrifice. And it's not fair because I feel like, you know, when other people are pursuing different things that people deem as more prestigious, like grad school, medical school, law school, things like that, 
people understand oh no she's in med school or she's in law school like she's allowed to skip out on things she's allowed to not do x y and z but if you're trying to pursue something like content creation or starting a business people don't deem that as important i don't think that's fair i don't think that's fair at all i think that these things should be deemed as just as important i told myself this past year I need to start treating my channel as if I'm in med school. I know that sounds so ridiculous and it might sound so cheesy, but it's true. What would I be doing if I was a medical student? I'd be studying hours and hours, putting in work, sacrificing a lot in order to achieve the MD. You should have that same energy for any other goal, any other goal that same energy should follow. All of these things can be like separate videos on their own, but I do wanna end this off by saying that no one knows you better than you. Remember that at the end of the day, no one knows you better than you. Do what works best for you. You might start waking up early in the morning and get weird feedback from people in your life, from your significant other because they just hate being woken up at like 5 a.m. or from people in your life like, girl, why are you waking up early? No one knows you better than you. You have goals that you have set for yourself that you're trying to achieve. I'm a very impressionable person and I tend to second guess myself and I tend to grow doubt whenever someone says something about me that they deem as true or they feel like they know and i'm not saying everyone in your life is wrong because there's some people who really do know you and they they want to guide you but at the end of the day your parents don't know you more than you your significant other doesn't know you more than you your sister your brother your best friend everyone no one knows you better than you do what works for you and what you have to do to be successful it might be weird it might throw the whole trajectory off, but you have to do what works best for you. But if this inspired you to work on yourself and your growth in the new year, please let me know down below. I hope that you get everything you hope and wish for in the new year. I hope that we leave this year better than we came into it. I am on your side, I'm rooting for you. Let me know if you have any questions what else you'd like to see from me? And I will see you guys in the next video. Peace out, Girl Scout. Bye.